Good afternoon, everybody. I'm here to talk about Hurricane Milton, a very serious threat to the west coast of Florida tomorrow night and into Thursday. So you can see this is a visible satellite loop this afternoon. It's about as powerful and classic of a hurricane as you can get in the Atlantic. Um, we have a very um, well-defined inner core, very small eye, um, health, the outflow expanding to the north at upper levels as a, a jet streak comes down. So after weakening to a category four last night, it's back up to category five now. And this is looking like it's getting about to be about as strong as Atlantic hurricanes get right now um, as it moves into the southeastern Gulf of Mexico. And one of the things that was interesting is if you look at um, last night, it went through what's called an eyewall replacement cycle. This is from Derek Herndon um, on Twitter. Uh, you can see how that initial eye that it formed yesterday, it basically collapsed as an outer eye wall grew. Um, this is a classic process of major hurricanes. You know, the larger eye formed. And now what's happened is that larger eye is starting to contract again. We're, we're, you know, we're, getting, we're getting back up to that um, very strong, very powerful look. Um, and you can see... Um, on the Cancun radar, you can see, as I zoom in here, you can see that that's what that, um, you see that very uh, well-defined, um, very powerful, strong eye here. Um, we could we'll probably have another eye wall cycle at some point later tonight, um, with, again, as the storm will expand, which is bad because that, as the storm expands, um, you'll have the wind field expand, which will lead to um, more storm surge. But right now, we have a very powerful inner core. Um, and it'll be interesting to see what the recon plane finds in a little bit. Um, we're probably well back into Category 5 range uh, at this point. Uh, another thing to note is that the Gulf, it's actually right now um, over, um, not even the warmest water it's going to be over. It's over about uh, 20 to 8 to 29 Celsius water right now. It's actually moving over this area of 30 to 31 Celsius um, waters. This is what's the so-called loop current, where um, ocean water out of the Caribbean comes into the Southeast Gulf before going up in the Gulf Stream. And this is, so it's bringing in all this really warm water from the Caribbean, and the hurricane will be moving over that over the next several hours tonight. So depending on uh, whether, the, like I said, whether we get an eye wall cycle starting, or if, if not, we might see this make a run at even stronger intensity and, and kind of push the limits of what a hurricane in, in the Atlantic and really the world can do overnight, which is incredible to think about. Um, and look, but one thing to note though is, um, and you know, this has been advertised, we do have some environmental factors that will impede it as it gets toward landfall, because you can see all there's all this dry air in the Northern Gulf um, and wind shear is the, you know, the jet st stream is kind of cutting across here. So as the hurricane um, moves up into this, it will start to weaken um, at some point you know, mid to late day tomorrow, but it's just a question of how much, and you know, it may not weaken a ton before it gets to land. You know, it'll still be a major hurricane probably when it gets to the uh, west coast of Florida. And so uh, people there need to be prepared for extreme impacts from wind, rain, storm surge, all the hazards. If we look at the tracks, um, we're narrowing down a little bit maybe, um, still kind of in the, the general area from Charlotte Harbor to Tampa, um, somewhere in that area. This is the European Ensemble. Um, you know, again, it could be a little bit outside this, but this is sort of where most of our models are focusing right now. And if we go look at the GFS Ensemble, um, kind of the same idea again. You know, we're still still some spread, but basically somewhere between Charlotte Harbor and Tampa Bay. Um, maybe the cluster, the, you know, right now the biggest cluster is kind of into Sarasota, Manatee County. Could be a direct hit there, could be a little north, could be a little south. Um, and this whole area really needs to prepare for that possibility. I'm looking at a couple of our hurricane models. This is the HWERF uh, model. You can see it kind of shows, again, the core does get, you know, you can see it kind of does get eroded by that shear and dry air, but it's still showing a large, powerful, major hurricane. Um, this one moves into the Tampa Bay area, into Pinellas County. This is Hafs um, B, which moves kind of uh, right up the mouth of Tampa Bay. Um, a little bit uh, again showing some weakening as it as it approaches the coast but still a large and powerful hurricane spreading uh, rain inland so this is going to again it's going to cross the state it's going to be an inland wind threat as well so uh, keep that in mind if you live inland along the i4 corridor and, or you know anywhere in central florida one thing i other one I'd also want to talk about and i thought this was illustrated nicely by this tweet uh, by jesse farrell is that where the storm makes landfall is going to be really important for storm surge impacts because if you have a storm coming in let's say here um down around Bradenton Beach. This would be south of the mouth of Tampa Bay. So as with hurricanes, you know, we have this clockwise flow or counterclockwise flow. And so 
if the storm makes landfall south of Tampa Bay, all this water is going to pile up here along the, the coasts of Sarasota, Manatee County, down to Charlotte Harbor. But you'd actually have um, flow out of Tampa Bay. So you'd have very little surge, maybe some piling up, you know, along parts of Safety Harbor and Easter Pinellas here. But overall, you'd have a lot less water in the bay. And so this would be a good scenario for Tampa Bay, but obviously really bad for areas south. Whereas then if you had, say, the storm that, you know, kind of did what some of the hurricane models do and move into Pinellas County, now you'd have all that wind pushing water up into the bay. Still have bad news down here in Manatee County and Sarasota County, but you'd have, you know, up into Tampa Bay. So for the Tampa Bay metro region, how much surge you get is really just going to be based on, you know, these slight changes in track, which we can't predict at this range. It's just, you know, little wobbles here and there could make a difference. And unfortunately, it's just something we're going to kind of have to watch and see. You know, because the other possibility, I'll delete this, you know, this not shown here, but if, if, if you get a storm even a little further south of this, like let's say it comes in down here around Venice, which is possible. Now you're going to have negative surge. You're going to have um, offshore wind uh, here in, in Manatee County as well. So, that, you know, very little surge in this region. But now you're going to have a peak surge right back up into Charlotte Harbor and areas further south that got devastated by Ian. So somewhere along this region is going to see probably historic storm surge. We're just not exactly sure where yet. So just if you're told to evacuate, evacuate, get out of harm's way, and just hope for the best. But unfortunately, it's not going to avoid everybody. Looking at the hazard threat index, or the, sorry, the uh, hurricane threats and impacts. I keep wanting to call it the hazard threat index. But it's uh, HTI. The, it's a gra nice uh, illustration of, of the potential hazards. So this is from the Weather Service in Tampa. Um, you can see that we have a very significant potential for wind over 110 miles an hour over the uh, western part of central Florida. Um, and then you know, hurricane force winds all along the I-4 corridor are possible. Down here in south Florida, um, we're a little bit, you know, we're more in the tropical storm force winds. You know, if the track comes a little further south, maybe we, you know, might some of this might creep, some of the stronger winds could creep into the um, area just south of the uh, of the lake here. Um, so just something to keep in mind. I think uh, people down here are taking it seriously, hopefully, but you know, again, the, the core of the impact is probably going to be somewhere in the central Florida area um, near where the storm makes landfall and, you know, a little bit on either side of it. Looking at the uh, the storm surge again, you know, there, it's 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 potential for nine feet or more with even higher amounts possible. But again, this is going to be very sensitive to um, where exactly the storm makes landfall. I'm going to change the color here. And yeah. So again, if you know if it comes in on the north side, then you probably get big surge over this whole area. If it comes in you know, a little further south, you might get your more of your surge down in this region. Um, so it's just it's going to be hard to know exactly where that is until we get a little bit closer to landfall um, tomorrow. Um, in terms of wind gusts, um, this is from the half speed model. This is a project that I've been working on. So um, you can see you know you have 100 wind, wind gusts over 100 miles an hour. Um, as it approaches the Tampa Bay region, um, change the color here again. Sorry. Oops. And yeah, so basically the strongest gust will probably be near the landfall point and then you, and then spreading inland a little bit. But down here in, uh, in south in South Florida, you can see you'll probably have tropical storm force winds. 30, 40 miles an hour, maybe gusting a little higher at times. Um, but the strongest winds will probably spread along the I-4 corridor just south um, as the storm moves up through this region. And so, you know, certainly this will be an inland event, whereas, you know, Helene, you could, you know, went up, kind of went up the, uh, the west coast. So you had a lot of coastal impacts, a little bit less so inland. This is going to be an inland event as well. So keep that in mind. And, you know, certainly just be prepared to live in a mobile home. Any kind of manufactured home you want to evacuate as well. You want to get out of harm's way. If, you live, if you're worried about big trees, things like that, you know, maybe go somewhere safer. Just just play it safe in this case. And finally, this is just wanted to show the, <coughs> the National Hurricane Center's track. You see all the warnings and watches up for Florida, both at the coast and inland. Um, so again, you know, it could be could be you know, a little north of the bay, could be a little bit south. Could be, we don't know exactly, but it's going to be a significant strike on the west coast of Florida sometime late tonight into Thursday morning. So be prepared, listen to local officials, finalize preparations if you, if you haven't already, and please stay safe, everybody.